What's up guys? We are back in business to the good old arena grind. Yesterday's video maybe was a little bit uh, depressing or slightly negative sour mood with the talks about quitting and how to stay motivated in red. But it was a very interesting Reddit thread that, that I saw and definitely a topic that has been on my mind and probably on some other people's mind as well because there was a lot of comments both on the video and on the Reddit thread so I think that's definitely a topic that many raid players or not even raid players but just people in general but especially people that play gacha games or yeah like you definitely get those feelings that is it time to quit and has this all been worth it and so on and kind of like nutshell of what I said in my yesterday's video that you definitely shouldn't consider your time playing great. Was it worth your money or time? It's definitely not going to be that, but it is more about um, what kind of enjoyment you get out of it. And I wouldn't go too hard either, either both on money or time wise that you get burned out by the game. But if you don't, then raid can be very fun and <laughs> We will see if I have fun today or do I get a lot of losses. The, w the one thing or one of the many things is that the raid is a long term grind. You don't really get a lot of instant gratification unless you are like a very new, new player and getting lots of rapid progression. But that's not really how the game works in the long run. So on my day-to-day -day stuff, I usually, like today, I don't have any new champions, I don't have any new gear, it's all of my old stuff that you guys are used to, but... I've been doing very well for the last couple videos, so... We will see if I can keep it up. Maybe like five live arena sessions ago or so, I had multiple bad... bad... Uh, bad sessions in row, and I kind of thought that is this it, is it for me? Am I too high in live arena and I'm only gonna get destroyed by the top accounts? And I thought there would be no comeback, but we're doing pretty okay again, so I'm happy with that. I got some small upgrades with... <laughs> well, some people might say that they are massive upgrades actually, but I didn't get new champions, I didn't get blessing or empowerment but i did get four piece stone skin on both wukong and rotos recently but as you guys might know it's um as always harima is a pain that i deal not very well at all and both of those are hard countered by harima so the four piece stone skin is super good when it's good but sometimes it's just not doable Okay, he opened with triple support. That's not usually something that people do. Usually they, um, the last two slots that you have definitely would be one knocker and one support. That kind of gives us some options. Like, um, I definitely don't have to go with UDK. I could even consider going with like a triple knocker. Yeah, maybe I will actually go with both Rotos and Wukong, since he already has Yumeko and Armands. Something like Helicat isn't going to do anything. I'm definitely not going to go before him. I might even go for third Nuker, we will see. Since all of them have either Reaction or Stone Skin, more of them actually might not be a bad thing, especially since I'm probably going to ban the Armands and I'm going to get locked out. So, definitely good use of primal champions that are able to get locked out and get a turn anyway. I do have the Mikage, but um, he's gonna go first, and the Mikage's time isn't really gonna be that useful in a go second team. Should I really just go with Wukong? To be honest, um. Hmm. Yeah, we're still gonna have to deal with the Harimato. 
it's not gonna be fun. I guess I'm gonna go with it, but this seems pretty impossible battle to be honest. He has both Ulkalt and Harima, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to even use my abilities and and then if I do I'm not gonna do any damage, but we will see. Maybe I can outgear him, probably not, but we'll find out. Starting off with a very very hard fight. By the way, today's drink of choice, oh oops, is gonna be a plain old uh, very very original brand called Energy Drink, raspberry flavor. Not not actually I wouldn't recommend to be honest, it's not one of my hmm. I'm almost tempted to hit the Harima actually and not the George. I don't think I can I definitely can't one shot the George it. Okay, wicked. Anyway, not my favorite flavor, the raspberry is kind of meh, but I kind of wanted to mix it up. Not go with the same stuff always, but nah, not, not gonna get it next time. Wouldn't recommend. I don't think the, the energy drink brand isn't really my favorite. It's it's okay, but I don't I don't really like it that much. I think the um, what's it even called in English? Oh, lemon, yeah. I was gonna say citrus flavor, but I don't. That's like Swedish. That's not English. The lemon flavor um, is better, but there is much better choices than than this brand, in my opinion. The the raspberry flavor from oh wait, we're actually are we good? It's kind of looking pretty good for us. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> I was doing good and then I misclicked. I was supposed to do A3, but I think I pressed wrong key on my keyboard. Uh, but the how am I so low, low HP? We can just A1 it. But yeah, the. There's a Finnish energy drink brand called Thunder Energy. They do raspberry flavor, and it's way better than this uh, energy drink raspberry one. I ca like they are both um, both of their basic energy drink is just the normal kind of very um, like unnatural bad cheap energy drink flavor. I don't like either one of their basic version. But the Thunder Raspberry one is actually very good, and it tastes like th this. I don't even know that this is raspberry. Like, if I were to drink this blind, I wouldn't taste it. The other one really does taste like raspberry. It's way better. But for some reason, my local store stopped selling the raspberry flavor, and they only sell the normal one. And that's well, that's honestly as bad as this one. So not gonna get this next time. I would rather, not, not to get too political, but I would I would rather buy the Finnish, Finnish brand anyway, but um, but the basic flavor is just too bad, so. Okay, we actually won the first fight, it kind of looked pretty rough, but kind of like I said at the start of the video, the 4P stone skin and reaction actually gets you surprisingly far. You might often kind of underestimate it and take it for granted. I guess I do because I do have a good amount of it. Okay, this time we got the Narcissus Enjoyer. I don't think I want to go with Justice against this guy. Chances are that I'm gonna use something like um, yeah, let's open with Rotos and UDK. I'm gonna use something like Rotos and Wukong, and that is gonna be with Bolster set that gives shield buff, and then gonna do immunity and attack buff with her A2. That means that I got three buffs and uh, Narcissus could proc revive me with the A3. I don't really want to go for that, so. I hope he doesn't pick Angora just yet. I will go with her rather than Datsus, but we will see. These nukers hit really hard, so as long as... Okay, he went with that. 
as long as they don't have Harima in the team, in which case it's uh, impossible anyway, but I don't really need the attack buff. Oh wait, I can use Helicat in this fight. Okay, I think we're gonna go with Wukong and Helicat, right? Mm, yeah. He still has to pick a Nuker. And of course he could pick Harima. I guess he's gonna pick it if he has it, but... I think I'm gonna go with Mikake Ban since I... Got the Helicat. Helicat has been kind of... Oh, Lazarus. Well, that, yeah, that can actually do kind of well against Helicat too. Which one are we gonna ban? Yeah, we, we don't really have any Glennis or Immunity, so I kind of still want to go for the Mikake ban. But Helicat has been kind of out of the favor for a while. I don't think it re ever really was like a meta champion, but it was kind of... Um, it was so good that he, he, he was... Uh, Relevant even if people didn't. I honestly feel like the top players didn't want Helicat to be meta because I kept using Helicat, everybody was complaining about him, and I think lots of people were saying that they refused to use Helicat. <laughs> people that use Taras and Maritska, but anyway. Um, I don't think people ever really considered Helicat meta, and right now there are so many popular counters against him that people often counter him by coincidence, just by normally picking their champions, so it gets really hard to use Helicat, but when you find a matchup where they don't have a buff strip and they don't have a block buff debuff, debuff like he has with Lazarus, then Helicat can be insanely strong. I still would totally keep Helicat. Ah, no Helm Smasher proc there, that definitely hurt. I still would keep Helicat geared if you had him, even if it wasn't in your total best gear, but Helicat can be very useful. Okay, let's see if we can get the Helm Smasher proc. I forced the revive and my team is still kind of strong and healthy. And the Velasarius didn't get to screw me with the block pass step up, so I think we're good. Yeah, the, the Helicat damage is ramping up now. He does do that as well. I don't... I'm not sure if I can kill Ankara even with Helm Smasher Brock. I'm not sure if that was... That, that might have actually been with the Brock, but... Yeah, I wasn't expecting to kill it. I mean, Rotos is still a mortal. I didn't have an attack buff, and the Ankara is in tanky build with strength, and so sometimes he does those insane 300k damage hits, but sometimes he's just a normal nuker and not 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 the god. Um, we might be in trouble. I I don't know. I don't know if I screwed it up there. I kind of needed to get the Helm Smasher. Mm. Yeah, Brock on Rotos in either one of those turns. But I, I guess Wukong A2 is coming up soon, so. Wait, he does have the A3. Ah. Oh. oh, he doesn't, okay. I was gonna say, is the Wukong gonna get. Block Revival? I think I'm. Ah. Never mind. Is he gonna get locked out by the Lazarus? Okay, it's kind of a close fight. I think if I did more damage with the A, I think the A3 on Sifi and the A2 on Ankara, both of those, well, the first one at least definitely was without him, Smasher Brock. I'm not sure about the second one, but if those hits did a little bit more damage, I would have been super fine and everybody would be alive at this point, to be honest. But now it's kind of looking bad. Can I tank one more? Gotta say too. I do have the shield, but yeah, my UDK is 
in a ungodly tanky build. So that that was the full full Narcissus noob with the sh double hit and shield buff up, and we still survived. Okay, can we get a taunt this time? Okay, we didn't de need it. Um, the ah, oh, the crit was enough. One more turn for the A2. Okay, and we hit on. We hit on Ankara and he got the counter attack with Narsus. I think that might be it. It's look oh okay. And he got the A2 back up. I feel like he's getting the He's so he's winning me with RNG so hard. He keeps getting the cooldown resets. Oh. Multi multiple times in row and so on, but I am so close. One more Wukong turn and we're good. At this point I don't ah, I think so close, I've... that almost f f seemed like I could win it. I didn't even need Helm Smash or Brock at that point. If if Wukong just got one more turn, he would have totally swept his team, but... To be honest, th that was pretty close. I I made a mistake there. I was pretty unlucky as well, actually, on multiple things. Of course, you're gonna see things from your own perspective, but... This battle was totally winnable, and it was against a very good team, so I can't get too mad about that. Lazarus is is a super strong nuker. It's not a tanky one like most of the other meta nukers in Live Arena, but he does make up for it with his utility. His damage isn't quite like George's, but Lazarus does have actually insanely strong raw damage, even without defense ignore. It's not, it's not low at all, it's way above average damage, but the main thing about him is the utility, really. The, it probably would be a lot worse, though, if he had, like, um, average multipliers, so it is compensated well with the damage that he does, but the utility is what you really get from Lazarus. Like, he has everything. He ignores shields, he has block buffs, debuff, he does attack can grit damage buff on himself. <laughs> he can even do a revive as a nuker, he just does so many things. And of course lockout and so on. Obviously, over time, Raid keeps putting out better and better champions. I don't know how you can top Lazarus, like the the new um, the new top dogs of just champions in general, but like, uh, if we talk about Nukers, somebody like Siegfried and Lazarus, they are so packed with 200 different passes and skills and so on. They are quite different compared to the old champions that often didn't even have a passive ability and <laughs> their Nuke, Nuke might have been just AoE Nuke without any additional effects. And these champions have like 15 different skills and passive abilities and it's a lot different than in the past. So to be fair, Wukong for instance, well I guess he's a new champion, but his kit is fairly simple one, but it's just uh, simple and effective. Even Rotos, I would say Rotos is probably a bit complicated champion, especially for an old one, since he does get the extra turns and has very complex passive and so on, but um, yeah, stuff like Mountain King that has like a nuke with no additional effects and I guess he does have a passive now, but those kind of simple champions are are not gonna come back to the game without a rework, so but yeah, I, I don't know what kind of champions we can we can get to top Lazarus, I guess it's gonna be the Primal Void champions, I mean Surely that's gonna be a thing in the next year or the year after that. There's no way there's no way we're not gonna have primal void champions at this point. What do you guys think about that? Is it gonna happen? I have asked about it, haven't gotten any reply. I understand they wouldn't give up details like that. And I feel like many players seem to disagree with me and think that they kind of imply that those are not gonna happen, but I would be, I would be shocked if we don't get Primal Void champions. And th that's gonna be another, 
and another point of time where people are gonna have to spend money on game and people are gonna quit and so on so look forward to that as well we, we kind of get like a whale bird every year or so that they release a new mechanic like empowerment or blessing or primal champions or something like that and it kind of makes the old guard accounts mortal again <laughs> and it kind of resets what are the top accounts in the game and if you if you don't buy into the new stuff then you're not gonna be as untouchable as you used to be yeah i mean this account for instance five trophies it doesn't even have six star blessings on these champions and he is using kind of three basic champions. Granted, these are the ones that I use, so I think he just uh, played it smart and hard countered me big time because he, he went with like every champion that I use, including the UDK. But his champion pool, based on this, doesn't look that insane. I don't know how much primals he has or does he have them empowered or not, but um, he's putting me in a very what can I even do? I guess I have to go with Necrot. Yeah, he's putting me in a very rough situation because I I can't really ban the UDK with the Armands in the team. And I don't really have any movers left that that are able to deal with the UDK outside of uh, Narthus. But I guess we're gonna go with Eva. Eva is kind of squeezy. I mentioned this before that she fits speed teams, wouldn't be somebody that I pick early on in the battle. I think Eva is actually very good, okay, and he went with Arima. Very good, and, and this champion that counters the stone skin, which I have a lot. But actually, in this, oh, let's call it, in this battle I don't have that many stone skin, and I have lots of bolster, so maybe it's not that bad. Um, Elikat? Should I go with that? Yeah, I I don't think I don't think there's no way I can win this battle. Uh, what was I saying? I got carried that way. It happens. Uh, anyway, he has an interesting team. Oh yeah, I, I was thinking about does he have primals and does he have the top ones or the empowered ones? Based on this, I can't really tell because um, I'm almost certain this guy is familiar with my my builds and account because he picked very very specific counters against me and didn't pick a lot of shiny primal champions or void ones. I'm sure he has at least voids, but um, yeah, I don't know how much primals he has if he really has any. I would maybe expect that. This is one of those accounts that didn't wail hard recently, but I'm not sure. Okay. Narcissus went down, he's not gonna come back. We don't have any revive. And he does have like tons of stone skin and harima, so there's no way we can beat this team. Especially with the Eva that is not gonna do any damage through the Harima passive, so... Helicat was good, Helicat definitely bought us some time here, but I don't think Helicat is gonna be quite enough to deal with this battle. I'm even weak affinity against that guy. Not only does he have um, unkillable and taunt, but I I can't even crit on it with Eva. Or I mean, I can if I don't get unlucky, but... Mm, but yeah, there's, n there's no way that we can win this battle. Even if he didn't have the Harima passive, I don't think we could do it, but... It will take me some time to kill this team, and I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna be up that long.
Nervous was my best bet to kill this guy, to be honest, but um, he got one shot and he didn't even get the chance to do 1A2, which wouldn't have done that much damage anyway through the Arima passive and the ally protection. Oh, and he already has the, has the unkillable up because of Ankara, okay. We're just gonna surrender that one. That's an in interesting champion that um, I have actually been... Yeah, I, I don't... By the way, this is kind of funny. I don't have like hardly any Ogren at all. I don't think I even have... Um, it's not even that I have like used them for empowerment or just to rank up champions or whatever. I don't even have a single dupe on the Ogren faction. This one kind of eludes me and... I mean, there's a couple factions, like, let's see. Like, here we got almost four factions that is fully, fully upgraded. And to be honest, Demon Spawn I actually have had upgraded, but I empowered my, my Duchess recently, so we don't have this one fully. I'm sure I will get it eventually, so I'm not too bothered about it. But I, I thought the Duchess empowerment was worth it, because... I did lose 10 speed, but then I also gained it and some HP and um, defense. I guess I lost some speed on Helicat, but I thought it was worth it. But yeah, I got few maxed out, then I got a couple ones that I barely got anything. And then Ogren is the only faction that I don't have a single dupe on. But yeah, what's his name? Gizmark. Gizmark is one of the newer champions and or i mean he's brand new champion and he kind of went under the radar to be honest i didn't see a lot of discussion about him but uh i'm seeing him a lot in live arena he actually seems to be a very popular pick and he's kind of stone skin counter with his um with his burn Channing, and he kind of has like a passive and so abilities revolving around burns. But as you can see in that battle, he definitely was a pain to deal with, and he even is an HP scaling champion. <laughs> Weirdly scaling both from HP and defense, but I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. Usually, when champions uh, scale from two stats, and he's not the only one, but He's gonna scale much less with the other stuff, but... Okay, let's see Gizmark multipliers. But he, he does seem very good. Okay, so... First form we got some... Attack scaling. But it's more about the utility, so I don't think you're gonna build him with attack. And... I'm pretty sure... <laughs> Maybe somebody's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you don't actually build him with attack, and you go with the HP. But this guy, I guess, kept on the first form, to be honest. Did he change the form, like, twice? Maybe... I don't think he did... I, yeah, I think he did do it. I think he lapped me so many times that he went back to the first form. But the second form is where you, like, go after the burn, where you have your actual damage. But... Okay. 0 0.23 HP and 0 0.7 death. That isn't that bad at all. He definitely scales way more from HP than defense, but he does get some additional benefit from defense, and he even does defense buff, which is kind of... Uh, oh, no, no, it's decreased defense. My bad, my bad. To be honest, it, it's kind of funny that we don't have HP buff. I kind of get the implications that it might be too OP for other purposes other than damage, but... It's a weird trade-off that HP nukers don't get it. Though I, I guess it's a good balance way to do it, but I'm surprised that we don't have him. But yeah, he's kind of new. I have actually never used him. I obviously don't have him, but generally every champion in the game I have played with on somebody else's account. But I have never even played with that one. And... 
I'm definitely getting destroyed him by him, like you saw in that battle. And that has been happening for a while, so he's kind of growing on me. I wouldn't mind getting him and if you do get Gismark or well, whether his name was Gismark, it's kind of hard to say. But I wouldn't be sad if you get him. He's kind of underrated, I feel like. Anyway, let's see if we can get some wins and just not get destroyed. The second fight was very close though, so... But yesterday as well, I kind of felt like I should have gotten more wins, so... That's probably like a running team and it's just me being very biased. Okay, let's see if we can we can get the revenge against this guy. Belotero. Okay, again with the UDK. Do we have anything interesting going on on Reddit today? It's kind of starting to become my uh my content factory and my idea farm, so let's see what we get. Okay, he has both Taras and Mikage with lots of CC, so we're definitely gonna go with the Darts since we can have it, but <sighs> who do I even want to go with as my second Nuker since he got the UDK? I guess to be honest, I'm just gonna go with Rodos and I'm gonna ban the UDK. I don't think, to be honest, his last draft was, I get, okay, yeah, he has Harima, but still, th this seems kind of more doable than the last one, so maybe we can actually deal with this. Let's see, but yeah, of course, he's gonna pick Harima. I don't think I'm... I was planning to ban the UDK, but maybe I could ban the Harima too. Of course, he could just ban my Narsus, but... Oh, he commented the Lazarus. But the Armand is very scary, and... Oh, but okay, he went with the Lazarus, so we're gonna go for the UDK, sure. Damn. People flaunting their Harimas, I wish that was me. I really... I really want to get this champion so bad. You don't believe how big this it is that Harima is a Force Affinity champion. Not a Void, not a Primal. It's almost within my reach, but the thing is that there's... There's a trillion different non-void champions. The chances of getting one specific one is kind of slim. I, I might get three Harimas this year. I might not get the Harima in next 10 years of raid. You never know, so... But raid is so... so good. And I would have super sick defense nuke gear. And she would fit my builds and strategy so well that I really want to get it. Okay, one thread about Plarium uh, Creed. I think we're gonna revisit that after this battle. But let's let's concentrate on the Bellotero since he got me last time. I think my Rodos is higher crit damage than Narses, so e even though he's uh, the partner with Angora, but Angora isn't actually gonna cleanse his Thanos with the passive right now, unless I do it with the A2, but uh, Rotos is actually getting the passive. But it's not looking that bad, I mean... That's a very fast CV, I guess, N not a tangy one. And um, no Harima. I should be easily able to one-shot the CV with Rotos. I mean, even without Helm Smasher Brox and her having both defense and strength, then I should be able to do it. And if I get the Brock, I think I kill the CV like three times over. Okay, that definitely was not with the Brock, but... 
the CV was very low HP one. I would say, I mean, going for the fast CV is not wrong at all, but you will definitely see, for instance, if you look at my videos and see the kind of builds that people run on the CVs, that in the past people would go for maximum speed and they would go even with like flat attack gloves on the CV if that was their best possible uh, speed but nowadays it's very different and people do sacrifice a little bit of speed for the tankiness and even the really fast CVs they are generally like 120k plus HP that one even though this guy does seem to have very good builds, but that CV was surprisingly um, low HP. But I think, are we still gonna lose this fight? I think we still lost it. I don't think my Dutchess can take a hit. Which is your ES? Oh, he doesn't have A2, okay. If I can get a turn with my Dutchess, then I might be good. Oh, are we gonna get the ally attack? Okay, it's over. Wait, I actually survived it. I I guess we're good. I don't know if... Can, can the Mika game... Wait, can I even one-shot the Taras? Okay, I didn't. No? So close. Taras is like... 100 HP or whatever. But I don't know if... Even if I did kill Taras there, I don't know if I... Would have won it or not. Probably I would have. Kind of a bummer that both of the fights against him were super close. I, I feel like it, it, it was so little and I would have won both of these, but I actually ended up both, losing both of them, but happens. I, I guess these are pretty good fights, so I can't complain because I almost feel like I can at least win these and they are not unwinnable, but they are really hard matchups. But anyways, GG, let's see what um, what else are we gonna get? Am I gonna drop back to below 5.1k today or can we finally get some wins? Also, I wanna see what's going on with the Reddit thread. Okay, ah, there we go. Okay, let's see what this one is. Plarium Layoff Decreed. Note, for these tournaments, there is a minimum point requirement. Okay, let's check them. To receive certain rewards, for example, to receive Amaranthine Skeleton. By the way, I like the looks of the champion, w very cool. You will need to earn a minimum amount of points and also take first place. If you take first place but have not earned the minimum points required, you will not receive the champion. Be sure to re read the relevant window for all of the information of minimum points. Um, I mean, was that champion needed for the uh, where is it? for the Mika Confusion? Okay, I'm out of the loop. Where do you even need? Okay, you do need it. Okay, makes sense. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't even looked these events. I don't care. <laughs> I I ended up not going for the Mikage. Mikage Soul, even though I kind of said that it's not that bad because you build her with accuracy anyway. Just getting any soul on her would be good. And even if you can get the four star soul, but just getting any soul on her, like two, two or one or whatever, will be worth it. But I already, I think I have two star soul. I didn't go for the event. I didn't, wasn't even looking at this. I was kind of uh, just chilling. I didn't want to try hard some <laughs> some random Fire Knight tournaments for for the Amaranthi skeleton. So, but yeah, I I often don't really. Pay attention to pay attention. Pay attention to these random events that we get. I'm not really ever going for wins on anything. Let, let me show you just 
I often see people commenting to me that why don't you use Relentless set on uh, Hydra? Use me after five years. This is how often I win Relentless pieces. I definitely have not gotten any this year. I don't know if I got any last year either. I think most of my pieces are from like three or four years ago. Back in those days you could you could win Relentless set oftentimes by accident, not even um, trying to go for it. Sometimes I just accidentally got it, but uh, yeah, that hasn't been the case in a while and I don't really have the interest to try to compete with every random champion training tournament or whatever that we get. Especially the champion training tournaments, but none of the other ones really either. And they don't give you six star relentless from tacting marina tournaments. So if they did, I would go for those. But I think that they maybe briefly did for a couple times, and I got from those. But they stopped doing it, and at this point, I I really don't pay attention to this. But yeah, con congrats on the Harima. He didn't make any comment on the thread, so I'm not sure what exactly he meant. I guess that's just a, I don't know, the best build on his account. I, I don't know what he meant by the OCD, that it has full crit rate and he can't do it without these pieces, but yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, the, the, exactly. These people are saying that why is he calling it OCD with broken set? I don't know what he means. Okay, okay, he meant the crit rate, okay. Yeah, I kind of understood it, but it didn't make sense. Anyway, Raid Reddit, not as active as it used to be. I think it's kind of... Uh, honestly, says a little bit about the, the direction of the of the game. Not to get too negative or doomsday, but... Um, I miss the days when... Like, probably the worst day for Plarium, based on the interactions that I have, have had with them, was the day after Urokrim was nerfed. They got blasted really hard on Reddit and Facebook and all of the social medias. They really they really hate that day and the consequences from that. But to be honest, for me, the funny times were when we had some big community outrage or drama or something like that. For instance, at the time when, when we had... Uh, Urogrim nerf, or then a couple other ones. I remember Stu Gaming used to stir up some drama talking about all kinds of stuff like cheat engine or whatever. And sometimes I didn't agree with him, and sometimes I did, but he used to always get the Reddit buzzing and starting some arguments. And I remember there used to be some, some dreads about mad every now and then. No, not to rag on a specific player, if you know, you know, I I specifically mean one one guy, but I feel like I have mentioned him multiple times and I shouldn't really... Um, I don't want to mention him by name, not that he's like a Voldemort, but I don't want to like get people DMing him and like trolling him or anything, but I remember there's one guy very famous in arena circles. He made a couple threads complaining about MAD. I could probably find them if I Google search them, but he made some threads about calling MAD cheetahs. And when we had those kind of Reddit dramas, I actually enjoyed them. And we used to have a lot of more of them in the past. I mean, it was drama, but it wasn't too personal, so. It didn't go too far and it was kind of funny, so... And we used to have those kind of ready events every now and then. I, I remember always that when something happened, somebody in 
our clan used to post the Reggie threats on the Discord, but that channel has been dead for a very long time. It, it pretty much was when, <laughs> when there was some outrage on Reddit or when Stu Gaming served up something, then people posted on that channel and talked about the news or the drama. I guess I'm gonna go with the Rodos, but... <sighs> Almost could go for the Harma ban, but... Do I really want to do that? I don't think so, yeah. I think we're still gonna go for the Yumeko. Now, let's risk it. Let's go for the Harma ban. Maybe we can mix it up a little bit, but the... Combination of Lockout and Helicat could be very devastating. Even if we survive, he might be able to get the lockout back by the time that the block damage ends, so we will see. I do like the Helicat, of course. I can't, um, I can't get too mad seeing Helicat since... I'm Helicat's number one fan, and um, I feel like he's underrated. Oh yeah, because of the Narsus passive, he's not gonna even take the damage from Heligat. I don't know if I ever had this matchup, so I didn't even think about that, but the Narsus passive is actually surprisingly often relevant. It isn't just Taras A2, but it's stuff like counter-attacks and Helicat passive and... There's actually quite many circumstances where it applies that you, that doesn't don't really... don't really come, come to your mind until you... you face them. Okay, can we get an extra turn? Extra turn here would be pretty good. Okay, no. Can we get the revive back before we get locked out again? Oh, wait, wait. Can I kill the Sifi with A2? I think I can kill the Sifi. Uh, I mean, uh, assuming that I don't get feared. Okay. Yeah, no, not even close. Nice. I do have double reviver. I feel like I should be able to do this. Ah, one more turn. I think he's gonna have the lockout on the Yumeko next turn. Okay, we got this. But Helicat block damage should also be up, I'm pretty sure. No? Mm, yeah, I hope it's not. Uh, I'm not sure if we can kill the Helicat. Let's go. Let's just go for the Yumeko to be safe. But there's no way. I, I'm pretty sure I won the fight at this point. He might hit me hard now, though, if I get the Leorius one HP. I think I should be good. Yeah, I, I have my Angora with well strength and, and the Duchess passive and a shield. <laughs> Even if he has the hardest hitting Leorius in the world, uh, world, I'm sure I could take a couple hits, but okay. We finally got the win. Nice. I mean, to be fair, with the Leorius, his team wasn't the most scariest one, but... Um, it's still a rough rough challenge for me, it's not that easy. Yeah, well, what are even these flags? I, I was getting them yesterday and I didn't even... Um, I was getting confused by them. Chase points. 
Or what didn't do you even need then? No? I thought the chase points would be for champion chase, but I guess not. Wait, I'm confused. Is that a bug? Where are we even getting those tokens for? Maybe I'm dumb. Tell me in comments. What what am I not understanding here? I think I was getting those yesterday and I was getting a little bit confused as well. By the way, let me show you the UDK build. In, in that one battle, my UDK was tanking the Narciss forever. And I was thinking in my mind that I should show the build afterwards. But I forgot about it. Also, in all of my videos, I do have my Hell Hades Optimizer link in the description. It's not like a snapshot of my builds six months ago or whatever. It's the current updating uh, builds that I have. So you can always check, check my builds from there. Of course, if you have any additional questions or comments, you can... <laughs> You can hit me up in the comments or Discord, but even without asking anything, you can get access to all of my builds and masteries from there. Of course, some sometimes I might have some mistakes on masteries of some champions, but generally they they should be they should be correct. But yeah, if we talk about this UDK build, for instance, it it, it is very good. The one issue that many endgame players would find with this build is that he has too much attack ideally it would be as low as possible so that Taras A2 only does half of the damage but um, I just happen to have attack substat on all of my uh, best damage pieces sadly and I, I would lose so much HP if I got a little bit less attack and even still, I wouldn't completely be able to avoid attack. Like, this is the only banner that I have. By the way, how come that isn't... Um, I guess I have forgotten to ask Skendit, but... There's so many other things that I need to do. Oh, okay, I don't have enough. There's so many other things I need to do as well, but... I don't think I have any... Any other banners for... UDK, actually, because... Yeah, you, you don't want to get speed substats, and I just haven't had good luck with him. But you want to make your UDK as tanky as possible, as low as possible, and with as little bit attack as you can. I decided to not focus on the attack, but many other people would go with um, unleveled weapon or maybe plus 12 weapon to try to go low attack and maybe I would do it as well if I if I didn't happen to have attack on it, like every single other piece that I have on the build but outside of that it's super good and even Taras is getting a little bit out of the meta he's not out of the meta but he's not 100% use rate in classic arena defense and offense like he was just a while ago so but yeah he does have very high defense as well. I think he crits for like 33k or whatever against that one guy. And oftentimes it can kind of catch you off guard how much damage UDK can actually do. And sometimes people do go with even the damage build on stone skin UDKs. I have seen that many times and uh I can't remember who it was, but just a couple days ago, one of my viewers was DMing me about the new UDK, maybe like a week ago. And he was asking me if I have tried it and so on. And I remember he, he said that he ended up using it, and then he changed his mind and stopped going with the new build. I do like going for the very plain, basic ultra tanky build, but even the tanky UDK can do surprisingly high amount of damage sometimes. Okay, UDK and Rotos is going with my tried and true strategies, but I guess 
we're gonna go with Narcissus and Ankara. Do I even want to go with uh, Dots? I don't, I don't think so. Okay, he has both Harima and UDK. I don't know how good choice uh, Wukong would be here. Kind of running out of options, to be honest. Maybe I should have just gone gone for the Wukong and banned the Harima, but I ended up going for, for the Eva pick. I don't think this is the right matchup to use. Eva on. Ah, uh, Yemen has Warlord. I kind of do want to go for the Harima ban, to be honest. Can, can we kill him if I ban that? No, let's go for the Harima ban. Let's see how this goes. Not looking good though. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get destroyed. I don't know if I can even kill anybody on his team. If I can get some turns, I'm sure I can, but um, as you have seen, well, probably not without attack buff, but Eva might almost even be able to kill the Sifi through UDK. Definitely not without attack buff though, but um, we definitely could do something even through that, but he has both Lockout and UDK, so, and the Sifi A17. But yeah, if I had like a couple, like not even a couple, one other nuker other than Narsus, like let's say I had Lazarius or somebody else that doesn't rely on ignore defense, I I probably would have done way better against him. I would have just banned the Warlord and dealt with the Harma passive. But if he, like I had the Arman, so maybe I should have just gambled on it, but if he banned my Narsus, and I picked basically any nuker like that I have, like Eva or Wukong, there would be like zero chance that I could ever kill his stream team through Harima. Even if my champions did like triple the original damage, there's like zero chance to ever kill him through the Harima passive. So basically I was kind of um, out of luck and in a position where, where it's unwinnable because I don't have the champions to deal with him. That's why I I need to get Harima so bad. Not only do I have really good gear for her and she will fit my teams and I, offensively she will be great, but also just the mere fact that I will sometimes pick her and not have my enemies pick her, I would do like 15 times better just because of that part. But one can hope I, by the way, that that's one question that people people sometimes ask. That um, I think I've done it for a couple couple of my recent shard pool videos. That I always put finally Harima question mark or something like that in the thumbnail. It's kind of a meme at this point. It might feel a little bit clickbait, but I want to get Harima. That's really the only only champion that I that matters from non-voids, so... I kind of put it as a meme there, rather, rather than trying to say that I got the Harima. If I do get the Harima, I'm definitely not gonna say it in the thumbnail, but I'm gonna say something like, I pulled the best champion in the game. Now that's gonna be clickbait. <laughs> kind of spoiling my, uh, my strategies, but... If you see something like that, then you know that I pulled Harima, but it's not going to be did I pull Harima, then I didn't get, then I didn't get her. Okay, we got the speed team, can, can we do it this time? He got the Armands, but pretty sure that's a new 
Nook Wukong, and we got the UDK, so we're putting him on tough spot as well. Let's actually go with Mitrala. Maybe I can get some use out of Mitrala. Petrification, we will see, but let's. Yeah, normally I do prefer to ban the Armands over Warlord, to be honest. It kind of depends on matchup, but we went with the Mitrala. Let's go for the Warlord ban. He's not gonna get any immunity buff out of him, and he's gonna have like have like hard choice that who does he actually want to polymorph with with um with the Armands. It's either gonna be one of my stone skin champions like either Rotos or Mitrala. Probably Rotos, I would guess, but. If he does that on Rotos, then we should get the Hex up with Mitrola. Yeah, okay. I knew that, but at least at least Mitrola Hex might give us a chance to win this battle. I'm surprised that he opened with the just with the polymorph and not with the turn meter steel first. But I guess he did that because I had three champions in stone skin and he wouldn't have stolen that much turn meter but if my mitral can get the turn before the armands and put the hex off he might regret that choice okay nice can we get the win I do have the defense buff on my Duchess too, so, so she sh should be kind of tanky. Though the Wukong A2 is gonna decimate my team, so... I don't have the UDK, Th that's what he banned. Well, okay, never mind. He can't really target the uh, Narcissus, right? Okay, yeah. He saved the A2 because he could only hit either Duchess or Mitrala, and both of them were with buffs and high HP, so... He wanted to save it for the right moment to hit Narciss and actually one-shot my team. But he got polymorph because he went for the A3 that bought me a little bit of time and maybe we can do it now. His team is very squishy. Can we just kill uh, both of the supports with A2? Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't even close. 120k and 115k. Both of them definitely had very low defense. Like basically zero defense investment, just full speed. Okay, 56k, he definitely didn't get Helm Smasher Brock right there. That, that's the massive difference because if he did, he would have done like 150k or something like that. But my Duchess was so high HP that that might have been enough to kill her, but not to wipe my rest of team, so I was good regardless. But okay, we we finally got the win. It's been pretty hard session. We got very rough enemies and some of the battles were super close, but hasn't been other um, I haven't been farming points today, let's say. Wait, wait. Is this his moment to one-shot my team? I think I can survive it. Okay, he doesn't have it. Okay. He almost... I don't think he could have killed my Narcissus, but it would have been very close if he had the A2. My Narcissus is still pretty high HP, even though that doesn't make him that tanky, but um, I don't recall what kind of defense I have on Narsus. Okay, 122k HP with 2.5k uh, defense, so the defense is pretty low, to be fair. But yeah, th this is the build that we're with. He, he also has a banner that isn't as candid, but I think I have like 15 fails on this banner, so I have tried to do it, but I just 
for the life of me I can't get HP ascension on it. I really wish so I could move on on other pieces, but I have been stuck on that for <laughs> probably a couple months at this point. And gonna get the new fusion soon, so probably I'm not even gonna get it done before that. Wait, what happened with my camera? I don't know. It froze or something. This happened to me one time before. Okay, I wonder how long the camera was frozen, but <laughs> I restarted the recording. I have no idea why that happened, but it actually happened to me one time maybe like a week ago and never before, so I don't know did I change something or why did the camera freeze. Okay, we're against War Mulmin again. I think I fought him on the last video, maybe. I can't recall. I can't recall if I won that fight or not, but I think he's a very close fight. I can win him. He can beat me, but it's not unwinnable. If I recall right, I think he has Lazarus and like a few primals that he likes to use. I, I don't recall Lazarus and something else. Maybe maybe it was Lazarus and Kriegs, yeah. I don't think he had Siegfried. But yeah, I'm not like Biohack, I don't have a Excel file with everybody's builds. I kind of used to have some notes back in the day long time ago for Classic Arena Reset, I kind of had people's defense teams um, written down, but I haven't done that in a long time and definitely not in Live Arena, though it does make a lot more sense for a biohack when he competes with the speed and it's super important to know if he's faster than a specific player. So. Maybe it's a bigger deal for him, but I can't even recall War Movie's roster fully out of the top of my head, even though I definitely have fought him a couple times before. Okay, so I guess he's gonna go with the Rotos UDK. Pretty sure he had the Kriegs, yeah, but. If he doesn't pick Lockout, maybe I'll ban the Wukong and, I mean, ban the UDK and go with the Wukong, but let's see what he does. Uh, I, I always forget the champion's name, but... Okay, he has that one. Did he not have Lazarus? I feel like he does, but maybe I misremember. But that champion does have unkillable, it's a... Pretty annoying one to deal with, but maybe we can actually buff strip, buff strip him or put block damage up with Wukong, so we're gonna go with Wukong and ban the UDK. Kind of surprised that he let the Armands slip in. Maybe he wasn't expecting me to ban the UDK, but... This seems kind of winnable. I think he has to have a kind of decent gear. But this kind of seems like a battle that I could totally beat. But we we don't want to under underestimate the primal primal champion that he has. It can be super annoying and everybody on his team is super good. And the Marit Kasifi double revive combo is super super pain to deal with. But on the other hand, uh, oh, we, I think we, did we weak hit on him, but he did, he did let us have Armands, I'm kind of shocked that he did, and Armands is super crazy. Even though he got Polymorph there, but 
he pretty much got his job done anyway, so no complaints about that. Though, though it, it might be a little bit hard to, like I said, deal with him because I have the Wukong, and that's not gonna... I only have one Nuker and it's Wukong. That's not gonna wipe super well with the Marriage Capacity and Sifi Revile. If we were to win this battle, we have to kill his entire team like many times. It's not gonna be one bang and it's done. I have to kill them over and over again because they're gonna keep reviving each other. And it's a ticking time bomb against Rotos. We don't have multi hits and we can weak hit on him, so we will see about this. Let's just go with the A1 instead of the shield on the Dutchess. Can my Dutchess survive this? <laughs> okay, good. Otherwise, I would have regretted this, but now Rotos is back to more than 50k. Yeah, fixed, back, back to more than 50k HP. And even if we don't weak it here, we can kill it. And if we don't weak it, it's gonna get extra turn. So it's not. Oh, we got a stun. Oh, okay, that was lucky. My Wukong doesn't have like any accuracy, so I wasn't expecting that. Okay, now. Good. Now it might be a little bit better. We can kind of. He only has Maritska Revive. Or Maritska Up. And she doesn't have. Direct revive, so I can turtle a bit here and not to try kill her too early. I mean, she's kind of gonna die even if I don't want to, because he's obviously not gonna use his skills and he wants the Maritzka to die as fast as possible. But we can kind of get our team prepared a little bit. Actually, I hope it dies on this A1. Then we still have the attack buff and immunity up. Okay. Yeah, actually I would have preferred if it already died. But I, I guess we're gonna get the... Oh, okay, never mind. That's perfect. So we, we have the cooldowns back. Wukong is fairly high turn meter. So he's gonna cut in. But actually, every... I think I lost. We don't have whale up and... Everybody on his team is gonna take a turn. This looks bad. I do have the cooldowns back on Armands, but I don't think I'm gonna get the turn with Armands, am I? Yeah, not, not looking good. Ah. His Rotos doesn't hit that hard, to be honest. Uh, surprisingly, uh, small hits. I don't know if he's just getting unlucky and... Not getting any Helm Smasher proc, but I think it's probably both. That he's not getting it and he doesn't have that uh, insane gear. I don't know who I want to revive. I think we're gonna have to go with the Armand's revive. Okay, it, it's not gonna matter. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of close, but the Sifi Marriage combination is. Is hard to deal with. I have said it many times, but um, Marriage Capacitive has no cooldown and it revives the entire team at 75% turn meter. Marriage still needs to get nerfed. Either one of those by itself is super OP and one of the best abilities in the game, but both of them being on a passive skill is just really closely broken and even with the release of Narsus. Marriage Capacitive definitely needs to get nerfed. Either it needs to revive the team at 0 turn meter, or it needs to have a cooldown on the revive, but it can't have both of them. It's too, too, like, not even a little bit game breaking, but just massively game, game altering and game ruining. That's why every single defense team is still using Maritzka, even after the release of, um, Narsus, something needs to be done about that. Even if you do want Mariska to be the best champion in the game, that's still too much. 
that passive ability needs to needs to be nerfed. And I, I know nerf is the word that Plarium doesn't like to use, but Mary's passive definitely needs a moderate nerf. Not not even a little bit tweak, but it, it needs a good good nerf on it. I would say that even the even the A1 and A2 could almost get nerfed, but the passive is the biggest game ruining and altering issue. I still I think a lot of people hate Armands at this point the most, but I still think that Mariska is way more annoying to deal with than Armands. Even though Armands is super good, but um, you might feel like there's no counter play against Armands, but I feel like there's still way more counter play against him than Mariska. Like us getting the polymorph now and using stone skin and so on. Or outspeeding it. And Mariska, you can't even outspeed. Of course, you could technically uh, block the passes with Ramandu or something, but that's pretty hard to use in the current meta with polymorph, especially since Mariska does have a cleanse anyway. Yeah, I have fought against this guy many times. I think he usually beats me. It, it's a very hard matchup, but I think we just have to go with the Rotos again. Maybe I'll go with Necret as my last pick. We will see about that. I hope he doesn't have a lockout, but I think he's he's just gonna go without any reviver and okay, okay, Arbys. And go with the lockout. Okay, no lockout, no reviver. I guess our base is kind of kind of pseudo reviver with her revive on death, but not really. I would count Maritska as a reviver, but not our base. She does have immunity too. Otherwise, Mitra would be kind of interesting here. But I think we're gonna go with the Necrot. That will give us a little bit both extra survivability and extra damage as well, and maybe we can get rid of the Harima, but not gonna be easy. He, he has the revive on death and the taunt and the block damage and ally protection and so much so much stuff in this team. Plus the lockout, AoE lockout on the RBC1 and the buff strip and other good stuff as well. Yeah, if nothing, my Necret is... He's pretty tanky, but he's kind of out of the favor in the current meta. Necrot used to carry me a lot, I'm sure he's a big reason why I got got some good uh, results on my account, because I was lucky enough to pull him back in the day, but I would kind of need my my new Necrot at this point. I need to get like Galatir or one of the other meta, meta champions. Galadir or Quixia, let, let me have one of those two. Also, we have to be uh, afraid of getting poly not polymorphed, petrified by the R base, but she doesn't have the revive on death up yet, so. Right now it isn't so, but at some point I would 
probably avoid using the Rotos A1 so that I don't get extra turns. But I kind of took a risk there and I wasn't gonna get petrified so I didn't mind doing it but if I did get extra turn I would still lose my boss earlier so it wouldn't have been a good deal. We both have the Harima passive to deal with, as well as the all of the buffs that he does, and we hitting on both our base and Harima. And we can't even go for Harima first. We kind of have to go <laughs> go with the our base. So this is this is not gonna be easy. <laughs> He's like rotating the unkillable. Um, I mean not the stone skin taunt. Unkillable and uh, um, no block damage, and then the revive on death. So he's gonna be kind of permanently pseudo immune to death. But I do have a very tanky team with double reviver and necret, so maybe I can take some hits. This is pretty much as tanky team as I can make, so hopefully it's enough to survive it. I think that I think the stone skin is gonna come back again soon though. And uh and she's full HP. Maybe I will go for A2 on Harima. Okay. That that I was kind of hoping for a little bit more damage, and she's gonna get healed to full anyway with those um, uh, heals. Maybe I should have done it on our base just to steal more HP. But if I could sneakily kill the Harima before the our base gets the taunt up again, that would be the best. I, I would win at that point. But even if I were to get the Necret A1 or Necret Ally attack in and didn't weak it on the Harima, I don't think she would die there. I guess the Harima can get Polymorph though. I probably should focus on the R base and just count on the Harima getting petrified. Okay, now we have the Revive on Death up and this is very, uh, very scary. We have 30 percent chance to get petrified every time we attack. Let's actually go for the other nuker. It's gonna be very squishy, so maybe we can get a kill. Nah, he got <laughs> he got petrified. Um, I'm gonna go for a one. I think the a three isn't gonna do more damage, so. Might as well do it. I'm kind of going back and forth hitting the Harima and the... Whatever the other Nuker is called, but... I feel like I have a better chance to kill him than Harima. And I, if I could kill him, then he wouldn't get the block damage up as fast and that might give me enough breathing room to actually uh, snowball it into Harima kill and our base kill. Our base still hasn't even used the A1 that she's gonna use next turn, which is also gonna be a lockout, so I mentioned this many times before in the videos, but I feel like our base is super underrated primal champion. I definitely wouldn't mind getting one. But I think that's it. We kind of needed to get the polymorph on the Harima. I think it might be too late to make a comp. Okay, yeah, we, we even got locked out there. And petrified, but the Ankara stole it. Okay, we, we got both stunned and... Uh, and taunted. 
Yeah, this fight is winnable because of Polymorph, but it's basically only winnable with Polymorph procs on Harima, so we didn't get that this time. Can't, can't be too sad about winning it because I'm <laughs> I'm obviously getting like ultra mega hard countered by him. If we had um, like if I didn't have very good gear, this this would be way way worse than it was. We kind of got carried by the, the gear in this one. But yeah, t today definitely wasn't my day. We were getting farmed, to be honest. I mean, I guess maybe I barely almost say that 50% win rate or maybe one or two more loss, but last fight isn't gonna isn't gonna fix that, but let's get one more win. Are we gonna have the fusion next week? I feel like we should, but I'm not 100% sure, but th there should definitely be some stuff next week. Also the content creator stuff, I I wonder when we when we are going to get those awards. Is it going to be next week? M might be a lot of events. Events then, or maybe they're going to happen the week after that, I don't know. Okay, we're against him again. I think we're probably gonna end up with the exact same picks. I don't have anything better that, that I can use against him than what I used the last time. It's kind of sad. There's not no big big brain play that I can do here because of the mainly because of the harem, but the entire team is like countering me and very strong. But maybe we will get better RNG with the polymorphs this time. Th that's pretty much the thing that we need to win against him. Do I want to go with you, DK? I guess that doesn't matter. Our base, UDK. Whichever. Okay, yeah, he still went with the R base and not UDK. He kind of does the same deal anyway, but um, surely I'm gonna go with the Necrot. I mean, I guess I could try Mitrala, but I don't think... Let, let's try Mitrala. Let, let's see if it's gonna go any better. I do have the cleanse. I do have the petrification, but he still does have the immunity, so... I don't know if I can really make use out of her. I think I, in the past I have tried to use Mitral against him and it, it hasn't worked, but let's give it another go. 